Argentina is caught in the grip of an economic crisis so severe that its foundations are crumbling. Prices are doubling, the poverty rate has reached 45%, youth unemployment has soared above 30%, and a once vibrant middle class faces the looming threat of destitution. Skyrocketing prices have eroded the purchasing power of everyday citizens and left them struggling to make ends meet. The burden of mounting government debt hangs over the future prospects of the country. Much of Argentina's problems are self-made. Political instability, mismanaged finances, and uncosted socialist policies have meant the country has been hit harder by external shocks like the pandemic and rapidly changing commodity prices. In this video, we will unravel the intricate web of Argentina's economic crisis, exploring the signs of an impending collapse, and ask if Javier Millet's free market economics could be the solution. Brace yourself, as this tale of financial meltdown holds valuable insights for other countries facing rapidly increasing prices. Before we get into it, please remember to hit that like button and subscribe. We will cover some important and controversial topics on this channel, and your support will really help us with the algorithm. To truly understand the gravity of the situation, we must rewind the clock and examine Argentina's economic history. Argentina has experienced periods of great prosperity and was once known as the breadbasket of the world. It has a well-educated population, abundant natural resources and rich farmland. However, from the early 20th century, these moments of wealth were interrupted by repeating bouts of instability and hardship. Argentina's economy relies heavily on exports, including corn, soya bean, and motor vehicles. This means it is more affected than most countries by fluctuating commodity prices caused by international events outside its control, such as the 2008 global financial crisis. To continue providing its generous social programs in times of low international prices, the government has needed to borrow money from international institutions, such as the International Monetary Fund, that has come with austerity conditions. But the roots of Argentina's economic troubles run deeper. Internal governance issues, including political instability, corruption and mismanaged policies, have caused repeated crises. Short-term fixes and populist socialist measures have provided temporary relief, but failed to address the underlying structural problems that continue to trouble the nation and worsen the long-term situation. So, what is the current situation in Argentina? The most menacing challenge the country faces has been hyperinflation. Inflation reduces the value of money through dramatic increases in prices for goods and services, but without a similar rise in incomes. Inflation reached 107% in April 2023 and has been fueled by misguided government taxation and spending, excessive money printing, and a lack of credible measures to rein in the spiraling prices. Essential goods and services have become increasingly unaffordable, pushing ordinary Argentinians to the brink of financial distress. To combat inflation, the Central Bank of Argentina increased the benchmark interest rate, the price banks pay for borrowing money, by 600 basis points to 97%. By raising interest rates, the Central Bank aims to reduce the money supply, reduce inflation, and stabilize the economy. In addition to the rate hike, the government is intervening in the foreign exchange market. By selling foreign currency it holds, the government is influencing the value of the peso, which will help control inflation by reducing import prices and preventing excessive price increases for imported goods. However, these measures can have unintended consequences. As interest rates rise, borrowing becomes more expensive, discouraging investment and slowing economic growth. Small and medium-sized companies struggling to stay afloat amidst the economic downturn find it increasingly challenging to access affordable credit, hindering their ability to expand operations or invest in new ventures, resulting in mass unemployment, particularly for those under 30. Unemployment is a telltale sign of economic distress and has recently plagued Argentina. High joblessness rates have bred dissatisfaction in voters. The need for sustainable job creation and an uncertain investment climate has hindered the country's potential for strong economic growth. The latest figures indicate an unemployment rate of over 15%, with youth unemployment reaching a staggering 30%. 
The consequences of such staggering joblessness are felt deeply by individuals and families struggling to make ends meet, and the long-term implications for social cohesion and the ability of everyday people to improve their lives are concerning. Political instability, a recurring theme in Argentina's history, adds fuel to the fire. Shifting political landscapes and frequent changes in government have hindered long-term policy continuity and created an environment of uncertainty for both domestic and foreign investors. This volatile political climate has eroded confidence in Argentina's economy and deterred much-needed international investment. Foreign investors are wary of committing capital to a country where policies can change overnight, and domestic businesses struggle to plan for the future amidst the ever-changing political landscape. Years of mismanagement and unsustainable borrowing from recent governments have left the nation burdened with an overwhelming pile of obligations. According to the International Monetary Fund, Argentina's external debt is well over the $300 billion mark and only increasing. As debt levels soar, paying the interest becomes increasingly difficult. It requires scarce national funds to be moved away from providing vital public services to pay for it. The weight of this debt is not just a burden on the government, but also on ordinary citizens, as the IMF forces the government to implement austerity measures, including cuts to social programs and subsidies. Argentine President Alberto Fernandez and protesters in the capital have criticized the IMF and expressed opposition to debt and austerity measures. President Fernandez and the protesters are pushing back against the IMF as they believe these policies have had a detrimental impact on the country's long-term economy. It is worth noting that Argentina has a complex history with the IMF, including debt default and negotiations for financial assistance programs. In the past, Argentine leaders such as Nestor Kirchner have taken a firm stance against the IMF, emphasizing national sovereignty and expressing their desire to avoid dependence on international financial institutions. But with recent droughts affecting agriculture output and global shocks such as the pandemic affecting commodity prices, Argentina has had to turn to IMF loans and the promise of austerity. So let's delve deeper into the signs indicating that Argentina's economic collapse or meltdown is imminent and explore the potential implications for the nation and beyond. The central bank's desperate attempts to stabilize the currency through interest rate hikes and intervention in the exchange market have yielded limited success, fueling fears of an impending collapse. However, more than the erosion of purchasing power troubles Argentina. The economic crisis has intensified social inequalities, pushing more people into poverty and stoking social unrest. The World Bank reports that the poverty rate in Argentina has reached a staggering 45% with vulnerable communities and marginalized groups disproportionately affected. The consequences of such deepening inequality are far-reaching, with a disillusioned population expressing frustration through protests and demonstrations. Some of these protests have turned violent and frequently come with burning tires, thrown rocks and smashed windows. The social fabric of the nation is fraying, and the divide between the haves and the have-nots grows wider by the day. Adding to the grim situation, Argentina is ensnared in a debt trap, with debt levels surpassing its ability to repay. A default would trigger severe disruptions in financial markets, hamper access to international credit, and deepen the economic crisis. The repercussions would reverberate within Argentina's borders and the global financial system, with billions of dollars disappearing from the world economy overnight. As is typically the case, deteriorating investor confidence further compounds Argentina's woes. Capital flight has been a recurring theme as investors seek safer havens for their funds. Foreign direct investment, a crucial driver of economic growth, has disappeared. The loss of investor confidence adds to the vicious cycle, as the absence of capital hampers efforts to stimulate economic recovery and escape a total collapse. As the signs of collapse grow more pronounced, Argentina stands at a critical juncture. Hyperinflation and currency depreciation erode the purchasing power of its citizens, increasing poverty rates and sowing seeds of social unrest. The burden of foreign debt looms large, threatening default and its far-reaching consequences. Deteriorating investor confidence hinders economic recovery, further exasperating the crisis. While attempting to address the situation, the government's policy responses face formidable challenges. The road ahead is uncertain. 
and the consequences of a collapse or meltdown would be felt across the globe. Could the solution be free market economics? The impending economic collapse in Argentina has led to the rise of economist and congressman Javier Millet. Millet has gained support from voters most affected by the current crises, particularly males under 30 and Argentinians who are fed up with the current political system. He has positioned himself as an outsider willing to shake up the system, offering a set of radical economic proposals. Millet, 52, a professor of economics with two master's degrees, runs on a libertarian platform. Central to Millet's free market economics is the belief that the market, when left to operate without excessive government interference, is the most efficient mechanism for allocating resources and promoting economic growth. He argues that free markets foster competition, innovation, and entrepreneurship, increasing productivity and overall prosperity. Based on the belief that the Argentinian government is too big, he promises to take a chainsaw to public spending, eliminate the central bank, replace the national currency with the US dollar, privatize state-owned enterprises such as healthcare, cut pensions, and sell state assets. Millet believes these measures will promote economic freedom, attract investment, and create a more prosperous environment for businesses and individuals. Millet's drastic proposals have seen him labelled as everything from far-right to a populist by the legacy media. He is a unique figure and is fast becoming an internet celebrity within his country. Millet is a bachelor living alone with five bull mastiffs, raffling his salary to the public via YouTube, frequently uses social media to connect with his audience around anti-establishment debates and advocates for gun ownership. But are his ideas good? The proposal to remove the Argentinian central bank and replace the Argentinian peso with the US dollar, known as dollarization, is not popular with most voters in the country. However, Millet argues that printing too many pesos has led to the current hyperinflation and dollarization would bring stability restore currency confidence, and mitigate the effects of inflation. This proposal has resonated with those who have lost faith in the peso and seek a more reliable store of value. So, could the road out of economic crisis come from dollarization and minimizing economic interference? Time will tell. But one thing is sure, Argentina's current situation needs some action to avoid its next impending catastrophe. But is this too much too fast? for a country more familiar with socialist politics. Do you think free market economics is the answer? Leave your opinion in a comment section and remember to like and subscribe.